Hello everyone. So today what the topic I have for you is very important and what it is that how many times do you feel angry, frustrated and not able to make any good decisions and even if you make any decisions they are quite negative in nature. How many of you feel something like that on a daily basis? So why I'm asking you this, like most of us feel frustrated that we have feelings of sadness, uh, kind of anxiety, depression, but we don't know where is it coming from because some days we just feel bad about it and some kind of, if I can say shame or guilt, but who's responsible for that? And the answer is probably you're going through uh, low self-confidence. And when you start talking more negative about you, I can assure you that's how a self-confidence looks like. And then you have a hard time making decisions as well. All these symptoms, which I just talked to you about, is associated with low self-confidence. And so today's video is going to be all about the science behind how your mind looks at self confidence and what you can do to improve it. We'll be talking all about it. What are the chemical changes happen in your brain uh, with confidence levels? Okay, so we'll talk all about that. Now, please do subscribe to this channel. Here in this channel, um, I provide you with so much knowledge about mindset, different types of mindset, uh, my expertise in success mindset, power of minds and subconscious mind. I do talk about emotional intelligence and of course, um, business and life strategies. And last, last but not the least, the motivational tips. So <laughs> with that, let's get started. All right, here we are. The science of self-confidence and will. Three secrets to unleashing your true potential. What are those? So the question which we'll be addressing today, are you ready to build your confidence? So what is the number one thing we need to understand when we're talking about the self-confidence? Self-confidence begins with perception. How you perceive yourself determines your level of confidence. So what you think about um, yourself, you need to understand that your perception, what you think. Now you would ask me, what is perception? So the perception is the ability to see, hear, become aware of something through your senses. And we all know that we have five senses. So whatever you perceive with them. So you'll ask me, we talk about, like I said, science, right? So neurotransmitters. So studies have shown that the confident individuals see themselves in the positive light, focusing on their strengths rather on their weaknesses. Believe it or not, confidence is deeply rooted in our brain's chemistry. That's what I was telling you about. Neurotransmitters are like serotonin, dopamine play a crucial role in shaping our self-perception. So now the question comes here, what are neurotransmitters? Neurotransmitters are chemical messages that your body can't function without. The job is to carry chemical signals messages from one neuron, which is a nerve cell, to another target cell. When these chemicals are balanced, we feel happier and self-assured and ready to conquer any challenge. But hold on. <laughs> when the, so what are the two main chemical neurotransmitters which we'll be talking about? Serotonin and dopamine. So what are those? Serotonin is associated with happiness, focus and calmness. And dopamine is associated with rewards and motivation. So we all need motivation all the time to keep moving forward in our life and achieve our goals. So dopamine is associated with that, right? So how does the deficiency affect you? You will ask me. So if you're talking about serotonin, so that brings us, if we are low on serotonin, that will give us low self-esteem, overly sensitive, you become very sensitive to anything which is talked about or talked to. Anxiety and panic attacks. A lot of people have uh, panic attacks and they also do have low serotonin levels. 
feeling hopeless, mood swings, social phobia. These people don't like to go out and talk to people because their serotonin levels are really running low. Then obsession or compulsion. So how they compensate with anything, they become more obsessive or compulsive about. Like for some of my clients, they would just, when they go out and shopping, they buy impulsively. And then last but not the least, insomnia. If you are low on serotonin, correct? And how you can increase serotonin uh, the best ways is you could do it through exercises cold showers sunlight and massage if you can do it regularly or in, even in exercise if you can go for walking every day that would really help you now let's talk about dopamine right so what happens which usually gives you a lot of motivation learning and pleasure and what happens when dopamine uh, is low in your body or it's deficient so you feel anxiety, depression, mood swings, one of the biggest things. And with dopamine, one of the more distinctive uh, about its deficiency is aches and pains. You will feel a lot of aches and pains, joint pains, anywhere in your body, right? Insomnia, of course, that is associated with that as well. And then last but not the least, impulsive behavior. So you might develop an impulsive behavior if your dopamine levels are low, but you can try that you don't uh, you know show too much of those so what are the things you could do and low self-esteem right and um, when you're talking impulsive way that is also associated with uh, anxiousness a lot of people lose their anxiousness and now we were talking that you have to have the right motivation so you also lack focus so anything you're doing with dopamine you just lack focus a lot so how you can improve your dopamine levels you would ask me and then the ways you could do is meditate daily to-do list is very important here and i talk about priority listing and time management with that also long-term goals is also important you don't have to get too much rattled about uh, short-term goals but try, try to write the long term if you're doing and understanding how dopamine works exercise regularly and create something so here in dopamine one of the biggest things to keep your motivation high try to become more creative you, it could be in the form of art writing music anything you like that also helps with the dopamine levels so as i said these two uh Chemicals, the neurotransmitters are absolutely must when you're working with uh, to build your self-confidence. Now, what is number two? Cognitive behavioral therapy. What this says, psychology also plays a key role in self-confidence. Cognitive behavioral therapy has shown that our thoughts, beliefs greatly influence our confidence level or what we feel. By challenging the negative thoughts, and replacing them with positive affirmations, you can reprogram your mind for success. So now for here, we are talking about how, how our thoughts uh, affect our actions, right? So when you get any thought, then uh, there is a feeling attached to it. It could be a good or a bad, and then accordingly you take an action. So the CBT or the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy talks all about that. And the psychology says, so when you're working with yourself, try to, uh, say more positive affirmations that has a lot of effect on your mind and your subconscious mind and then can reprogram your mind as well so instead of saying oh i cannot do this try to say oh hmm, this thing is so easy to do so there's a change in the world but that affects your mind right that affects your thought process your feelings attached to the thought process and the actions you would take so try it out this might help you a lot and what is number three to building up your self-confidence? Visualizing success is a powerful tool to boost your self-confidence. So if you're looking to uh, uplift drift yourself all the time, because that's important, you know, we have to be self-motivating. And uh, so envisioning yourself achieving your goals, you directly program your subconscious mind for success. So when you start to envision like, Okay, I've achieved my goals, I'm there. So you can start to uh, literally uh, program your subconscious mind towards the success. Coupled with strategic goal setting, visualization becomes a catalyst for unlocking your true potential and that you know the science behind of the self-confidence.
So now that you know the science behind self-confidence, it's a time to put it into practice. Remember, perception, chemistry, psychology, body language, self-care, visualization, and goal setting are the keys to unlocking your self-confidence. Believe in yourself, embrace your strengths, and never stop growing. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be back again with such more empowering video. And uh, hope you all have a wonderful day.